Hey guys, it's Jasmine. I'm back with another video. Um, I thought that I would just do a small little video talking about some creepy instances that happened with my mom, her sisters, things that happened to me, um, and just kind of put them all into one video because none of them are long enough to do a whole video on and I thought this would be a great one to do for Halloween. So I hope you guys enjoy. So I guess where I should start is my mom has two sisters and they were obsessed with Bloody Mary. And so there was a couple times when they were trying to play Bloody Mary. Now, the first one, I would consider funny. They were sitting in a den area and they had the whole room closed off and they had the lights turned off with a candle and they were sitting there chanting her name and my grandma and my grandpa heard what they were doing and so my grandpa decided that he was gonna go ahead and jump in there and scare them. So he goes sneaking around and he goes to run into the room to scare them and he didn't know that the door was closed because it was dark. So he slams into the door and then on top of that, that giant boom scared the hell out of my mom and her aunts. And so I thought that one was kind of funny. They didn't learn their lesson though. And another time they were in the bathroom and they had the candle and they were chanting her name and all of a sudden the flame, the flame went up really really high and then they looked over at my aunt and she was choking herself so they finally ripped my they finally removed my aunt's hands from her throat because she was choking herself really really hard it was all red right here and then all of a sudden on her back they saw three scratch marks which I think is just absolutely terrifying another time they were living in San Jacinto and I want to say that they I can't think I want to say she said she was living on 7th Street at the time but I'm not quite sure and um, they were living in this little house and just a bunch of weird stuff would happen. Um, they had bottles, this is obviously when they were older, I think all three of them went in on a little house so that they could live together. And they had the little shooter bottles of alcohol up on the wall and they said that usually once or twice a week those things would go flying across the room so hard that they would either break or they would be so shook that you could see like little bubbles in them. So it wasn't just like a, like they would go flying across the room. My grandma is actually the one that told me this story, but my mom told me about it too. So they were living in this little house, and they believed that they had a poltergeist named George. And George was a brat, but George was also helpful. So he would purposely flush the toilet, he would turn on the sink, and my grandma said that him and, my grandma said that her and my grandpa were sitting there one morning, or one evening, talking, and she said, oh, it's very, very cold, Bill. And he said, it's not that bad, don't worry about it. And all of a sudden my grandma looked at the fireplace and George had made a fire. And I don't know how true this is, but my grandma's not one to lie. I mean, I know it sounds really, really hard to believe, but my grandma, she just, she doesn't lie. My grandpa said that he, they ended up moving out <laughs> a little bit after that. And my grandpa's not one to be scared, you know? So I don't know, I don't know how true it is. And because I realize that this video is going to be a lot shorter than I originally thought, I'm going to go ahead and talk to you guys about some paranormal experiences that happened to me at a house in San Diego. So I, we used to live in this house in San Diego, and I don't know how true the story is, but apparently it used to be one large home, and then after the murders, they converted the home into two, um, two condos. Now, this was in San Diego, California at Mar on Marlboro. And we lived in one condo and the people next door lived in the other condo. And weird stuff would always happen there. If you would be upstairs and um, everybody would be asleep, you would hear banging downstairs. Like somebody was slamming the cabinets and somebody was angry and it always sounded like that. But there was never ever anybody down there. But when you went downstairs, all of the cabinets would be open. Kind of like I talked about at my dad's house. Another time, me and my sister heard some banging downstairs and my parents were down there. And all of a sudden the banging happened in our room. And me and my sister were trying to get down the stairs and something ended up, cause I was going, I was going faster down the stairs than my sister was. And something pushed my sister down the stairs, but it wasn't a push like it was trying to hurt her. It was a push that was trying to help her get down the stairs quicker. And so I feel like whatever was in that house there was two of them there was a good and then there was a bad 
and I felt like the good was trying to protect us. So there was another time when we were playing, it was me, my sister, and my friend Shanae, and we were all playing hide and go seek. And so me and my, me and Shanae decided that we wanted to go into the hall closet in my mom's room to hide. Well, my sister was close, to, closer behind us than I thought, and so she closed the door with us in there. And I remember I couldn't get out. And me and Shanae are standing there and we're holding on to each other and we turn around and we see like this white mist that was in the closet and we didn't know what to do and so we freaked out and we were screaming and I was taking a stick that was in there and now that I think about it, I think the stick was actually like the pole that you put up to be able to hold hangers. I can't think of the name of the pole right now. What is wrong with me? Anyways, I think that it may have been that and so I remember I had picked it up and I was like hitting the ground with it and hitting the floor, I should say, hitting the floor trying to get my mom downstairs to hear me. And so my mom comes bolting up the stairs and she's irritated. She's like, why are you banging on the floor? And I'm like, Jenny locked us in here and we couldn't get out. And she got so pissed at me and she was like, the closet doesn't lock, Jasmine. Like, you need to stop lying. And Shanae told her, she was like, no, we couldn't get out. We tried, the door was locked. My mom is like, you guys are liars. And she still didn't, she never believed us. Um, but I swear that closet was locked. There was another time that the neighbor next door, I, I, I was very, very young, but looking back, my dad told me and my mom told me that um, she was probably 14 or 15 and she was pregnant. So it was, a, it was a parents, their younger son and their teen daughter who was pregnant. She was going to walk down the stairs one time and all of a sudden something pushed her and she almost fell down the stairs as a pregnant girl. Now, I don't know how true this is, this is where I wonder if drugs were in the mix because my parents were addicts. My mom told me then in that house and a couple times later in life that the reason that that house was split into two and turned into two different um, condos is because there were there was a richer family. There was a rich family that lived there and this was in the early, early 80s. And I guess the girl was married to her husband but she was having an affair with his brother and she ended up getting pregnant and he ended up pushing her down the stairs and killing her and then he shot his brother. Um, the only murders that I could find that were on Marble Avenue um, in San Diego, California were not anything that had to do with that house so I don't know if it was just a fabrication of drugs that kind of, you know, made my parents think that things were happening but I know for a fact that that house was definitely haunted. There's no ifs and or buts about that. It was the weirdest house. I'm so glad we don't live there anymore. And I will go ahead and I will tell you about my, the, the craziest alien story I think that I have. So this one time we were living in this little house in San Diego, or in, we were living in this little house in San Jacinto. And I remember that at this point, my mom and my dad weren't together. They were taking a break or something, I don't know. And it was me, my sister, and my mom, and we were all asleep in one large king-size bed along with my old dog named Sheikah. And it was me, my mom, and the dog, and we all woke up at the exact same time and we just immediately walked to the window and we don't know why we walked to the window. It was the weirdest thing. And all of a sudden we heard this loud, loud, loud thunder. But it was like a different kind of thunder. It didn't feel like the crashing thunder. It sounded like like a rolling thunder, I guess, is the best way that I can describe it. And all of a sudden, the whole room filled up with light. And the light was so bright that you could see things that you've never been able to see in that house before. It was hurting our eyes. And then all of a sudden, I just remember waking up in my bed. And I told my mom, I was like, mom, I had the weirdest dream. And I told her, she was like, I had the same dream. That wasn't a dream. And I guarantee you, if you were to ask my dog and she could talk, she would tell you she saw the exact same thing. No freaking clue what it was. Weird, one of the weirdest experiences of my life. So freaking bizarre. My mom, um, when she was younger, she said that um, there was a couple times when they were living in a house in, I wanna say Kansas at this point. I wanna say it was Kansas. And um, she said that the best way she could describe it is there was a bunk bed. And so it was her and her younger sister in the top, in the bottom bunk. And then the old, her older sister was in the top bunk. And she said that there was this beam of light that almost looked like a lake. Like it was a flesh color and it beamed 
from the top bunk all the way through the bottom bunk and they couldn't get past it. And they were stuck up against the wall. And they were like that for a long time until it just suddenly disappeared and nobody believed them. Another time my mom said that she would be sitting, she was really young at this point, very, very young. And she would be sitting in her room asleep and she said that a little bubble would come floating over to her and there was a little woman in a dress and she would just float around the room and she would like watch my mom and my mom would watch the bubble and then all of a sudden it would just disappear and I to this day have no idea what that is um, again that could have been just something that my mom thought of in her head when she was high it could be legitimate I did some research and there are other stories of people witnessing little ladies in bubbles so it could be that um, I don't know there was another time when we were driving in from San Diego back to Hemet and we were on Winchester Road. And I just remember I was looking out the window and all of a sudden I just saw these lights. And I thought to myself like, oh my God, it's a spaceship. But I never, like I knew it was a spaceship, but I didn't think, I was very nonchalant about it, I guess, if that makes sense. Like I thought to myself, wow, that's a UFO, that's a spaceship. It wasn't like a, oh my god, it's a spaceship, you know? They, it, it was the weirdest thing. And then my cousin said that one time she was living in, she was living in Potrero, which is near San Diego, California. And she said that she was walking back from her friend's house, and this place in Potrero was, um, there, there was just a lot of empty open space around there. She said she was walking back, and all of a sudden she looked up, and she saw these lights, and it's like something was hovering over her. And she said that it made no noise and she was totally aware that it was there, but she wasn't scared. And then she just continued to walk home. And then when she got home, she got ready for bed, went to sleep, and then woke up and was like, wait, like what did I see? But at that time, it didn't even bother her, which I think is weird. My kids just woke up um, and that's really all I can think of at the moment of like different stories. So go ahead and give this video a like, subscribe. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.